Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Megan and if you saw my last YouTube video, I just announced that I am pregnant and I went over my first trimester recap. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely check that out. I'll put it up here. Um, if you did check it out, you would know that I had a pretty rough first trimester. So I thought for today's video, we would do my suggestions for how to survive the first trimester and what I did to try to cope and help with all of the symptoms that were going on. Um, obviously everyone is different. There were things that people recommended to me that did not work and there were things that I did that worked for me that maybe wouldn't work for you. But if you are currently pregnant and you're struggling with morning sickness, hopefully some or all of these might be able to help you get through. So I have my laptop right in front of me and we're just gonna go through 10 tips of how to get through the first trimester. So, the first and the second one kind of go together, but it's basically B6 and Unisom. So, B6, I don't know what it is, it's a natural vitamin, but it really helps combat nausea. So, when I was in my first trimester, I would take one B6 when I woke up, one in the afternoon, and two before bed. Now that I'm almost in my third trimester, I am still taking B6, but just not two at night. So I do one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one at night. This seriously helped so much for my morning sickness. Nothing helped until I started taking B6, and it didn't completely, like I didn't completely stop throwing up or anything from the B6. It wasn't like a miracle worker but it helped me be able to function a lot better. It helped me be able to keep more food down and function throughout the day a little better than before I had it. And like I said, I still take it because it's something that has just really helped me throughout my pregnancy. And then it kind of ties into Unisom. So Unisom is actually a sleep medication, but my OBGYN, when I had told her about my symptoms and what I was experiencing, recommended me pairing B6 and Unisom together. There's something about them going together that really helps. So for a while I took just the B6 because I don't personally love being on medication or just unnecessarily taking things if I don't have to. But because I still was experiencing some throwing up with the B6, I decided to try Unisom as well. And this truly did have my morning sickness go away. Like. This was a huge turning point for me, was when I started pairing these things together. It actually didn't help me sleep that much. Like, I, I feel like the first couple of nights I slept through the night, which was great. But then after that, I don't feel like it actually helped sleep-wise, but it helped nausea-wise. My throwing up, either I didn't throw up at all, or maybe like once or twice. Like it was so much more manageable and I was able to function so much better. So this was a great pair, but I do have a warning <laughs> with the Unisom. I personally will probably not take Unisom again in the future because the thing about it is that it can become addicting. And so my goal was once I hit the second trimester to not take it anymore. I had taken it every single day for probably the last month of my first trimester. And once I started to wean off of it, because I'd read online that you could become dependent on it, so I decided to wean off of it. I went from taking like one pill to I cut it in half for a few days, and then I cut it into fours, and I basically weaned off of it in the course of a week. I got so sick from weaning off of this. That week that I got off of Unisom, I basically was bedridden. I was so sick, I couldn't keep a single thing down and I couldn't do more than just like work in bed. Like I was so sick that week. So if you do choose to take Unisom, I don't think every single person gets this way if they take it. My husband takes it sometimes for sleep and he's never reacted that way. But maybe because I was taking it daily, I, my body did become dependent on it. And so I did have to wean off of it once I stopped taking it. But just something to keep in mind and do your own research and see if that's something you want to try because the combination truly was the most magical fix to my morning sickness. But then 
I did have to deal with getting off of it. So for that reason, in the future, I probably will not take Unisol, but maybe if you don't take it nightly and you just take it when you really need it, it might be helpful. Do your research and hopefully that will not happen to you if you choose to take it, but that was super helpful. The next one is very generic, but just eating bland foods. I basically had to eat foods as if I had like the flu because for me, my morning sickness was pretty much like I had the flu for four months. <laughs> And so I basically would just eat soup. Like I would make a can of soup and kind of eat on that throughout the day. So it's kind of my lunch and my dinner. I couldn't eat a lot of it. I, I'm pretty sure I get the minestrone soup a lot and chicken noodle soup. So those are the two main ones that I would eat. And then on top of that, just kind of plain toast or cereal or things like that. They were really the only things that I could keep down so bland food definitely helps think about what you like to have when you're sick i did popsicles too depending on where i was and what i could keep down but think about what you like to have when you're sick and those probably will work better for you than eating what you typically would eat not sick okay the next one this is also pretty well known but eating small amounts and consistently if you're trying to eat a large meal you are probably not going to keep it down and also if you go a long time without eating so even just three to four hours you are probably going to get sick so like i said my soup for example i would kind of nibble on this throughout the day i would not be able to have a full bowl in one sitting but i would consistently eat it and i had my package of saltines which i forgot to mention but i went through i think two family boxes of saltines by myself because they were my try and true and the one thing that did not fail me that I could keep down pretty consistently and I would just constantly every like 20 minutes have a saltine like I just consistently eating in small amounts is really helpful from getting sick okay the next one is sleep but I don't just mean like get your eight hours of sleep I genuinely needed probably 12 hours of sleep a night i i would not feel good if i got less probably less than 10 but i felt my best if i got like 12 hours of sleep so if you're able to go to bed really early and sleep in as late as you can i am somebody who is super productive and loves to get a ton of tasks done I have a to-do list that I just constantly am looking at and want to get things done and it was a huge challenge for me to not be able to do that during this time. I felt, I was like, I don't even know what to do if I'm not doing my to-do list and I feel like I'm falling behind in so many areas but I truly just needed to focus on sleeping when I was not working and that really helped me get through that period. So if you're able to try to get like 10 to 12 hours and that will hopefully help you okay another thing is i was extremely sensitive to smells specifically in the kitchen and the bathroom every time i would go in the kitchen and i would just smell any sort of food even if it's a food i like or was eating i would instantly like get a gag reflex and sometimes actively throw up just from walking in the kitchen and smelling something especially like opening the fridge or if there were dishes left out like i could not handle that and i could not even clean any dishes because just the smell and looking at a dirty dish would nauseate me and going into the bathroom just the smell of like shower like shampoo and soap and cleaning supplies like that also was really bad so we bought a huge pack of candles and we kept one in the bathroom and one in the kitchen and we just always had them lit and that really helped uh, take down my nausea levels and help with the gag reflex and throwing up so that was a huge help and if you don't want to do candles you could probably do like an essential oil or something like that okay this one i didn't personally do but i've heard from a lot of pregnant people that gatorade or coconut water really helps i'm assuming the Gatorade is from the electrolytes and the coconut water is from the potassium. But also I think just in general, water is really hard to keep down in your first trimester, or at least it was for me. 
And so it's really easy to get dehydrated, especially if you're actively throwing up a lot. It, you're gonna dehydrate yourself, and so having that extra potassium and the extra electrolytes will really help hydrate you. I can't talk on this one from personal experience since I did not try that, but I have heard from a lot of moms and other people who are pregnant that that was helpful for them. Okay, three more. So this is more just like a little trick, I guess. I started taking my prenatal at night rather than the morning. For my personal prenatal that I took, I took the ritual one. Um, there wasn't a specific time that you have to take it and you didn't have to take it with food specifically. And so I found that taking it before bed was most helpful because I sometimes was throwing up my prenatal or just couldn't keep it down. And so I personally was less nauseous at night and so I would just take it before bed and I still do this. It's just a habit that I get into. If there's a certain time of day where you find yourself less nauseous, maybe for you it's in the morning or in the afternoon, try to take your prenatal during that time so that you can make sure you keep it down and at least your body is getting the nutrients from your prenatal if other things aren't staying down. Okay, second to last is don't risk it with food. I feel like there were certain times where I'm like, oh, I'm kind of feeling better today. Like. Maybe I can have my favorite meal, like maybe I can have sushi is the first thing that pops in my head, but of course raw fish is not allowed when you're pregnant. But whatever your favorite meal is, maybe I honestly still eat sushi, but I'll just do like vegetarian or shrimp tempura. Those are my two favorite kinds of sushi. But you know, I'd be like, I can eat this or I want to have a smoothie. Like I try to have a smoothie so many times because that was a daily part of my meal routine prior to getting pregnant and I just for whatever reason cannot keep down smoothies like I have not had a smoothie in probably two months because it's just something I would consistently throw up even when I hit the second trimester it did not agree with me so I feel like it's just better to stick with your safe foods that you know you can digest rather than trying to chance it and risk it and then you end up getting sick whereas if you just stay with your more safe food groups, you, you might not have gotten sick that day. Okay, and then the last thing, I touched on this a little when I talked about the Gatorade and the coconut water, but it was very hard for me to drink normal water, which is really weird because I love water. I am constantly drinking and have a water bottle, but it was just something that I could not keep down. And so I found that warming it up or having a drink like tea or something where it was warm water with some sort of flavor or, or plain, but you know, like tea or even hot chocolate or something, I was able to keep that down more, which helped me staying hydrated. So maybe try warming it up or doing a flavor in it. I also know some people do carbonated. That didn't really work that well for me, but that could be something that could help you to get more hydrated. So overall, those are my 10 tips of things that helped me during my first trimester to try to keep food down and not feel as sick. If you are going through that right now, I really hope that these things help you and you will get through it soon. That's just something that I would tell myself all the time is it's just temporary, it's a season, and it will get better. So I'll be praying for you and your pregnancy, but thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.